Good morning everybody, we are in the shop and we are working on the Megamoto again. It's not on the bench, but the shocks are. So this is our new shock tube. This is our old shock tube. I mean, there's a massive difference. One being that this is uh, an inverted shock and this is a regular shock. You see where the shock oil is on down here on this and on this one the shafts down here and the oil is up here. So but we also have a height difference, we got a size difference, we got you know I mean this carries a lot more oil, the shaft is a little bit bigger for sure. Oh yeah, shafts bigger, shock shafts bigger, everything is bigger. So what we're going to do to make this work for us is we need to make triple trees. So here's our factory triple tree, our lower one and our upper one. Now these um, the tubes slide into here and then clamp in. Super simple stuff. Uh, they bolt into this top one slide up into these tubes and you tighten on the clamps and you're done. Now we want to run these big shocks so obviously these triple trees aren't going to work. And the seven, second thing that's weird about these triple trees is the offset. There is a massive, I don't know what it is, inch and a half or something offset. Let me do a quick estimation here. Alright, so we got somewhere around like two and a quarter inches of offset. And what I mean by that is the amount that the fork tubes are offset from the pivot point. So you got your pivot point straight line going across here and your fork tubes here. There's about two and a quarter inches between here. Now from all the um, geometry and things that I've read for dirt bikes and motorcycles and stuff, that's too much. That's way too much. So um, we're going with a much safer number. We're going with a three quarters of an inch offset. Um, and that kind of affects how much leverage you have or how much leverage the forks end up having over you. I guess that's probably a better, you know. So, um, you know, if you have that huge amount of offset, you have more leverage over the forks, but the forks also have more leverage over you when they hit something, right? But if you bring that back, I think it's more of a, you know, more of a one-to-one -one, or not a one-to-one because -one, we still have a little bit of offset, but not as dramatic. So this will be the third set of fork tubes that I built. The first set, all I did was take and I bolted the fork tubes together with the wheel and everything. And you need a longer bolt than the factory one uh, because you end up with, you know, you have these big, much thicker, um, I don't know what you call this part of the fork, but the bottom of the fork is much thicker here. So the bolt, you know, not quite enough to get the thread on. So you need a different bolt. But <clears throat> the first time I did this, I just bolted the whole thing together, took measurements, and basically made the triple trees and put everything in there and just welded it, you know, right in place, you know, we like made everything as straight as possible. And then the second time I built them was for the last Megamoto and I made this fixture. So this fixture has these posts on it that I machined down to be the right size and they hold these are going to be the collars for the fork. So they go on there and then your triple tree goes on here and now you can see how much our offset is going to be different. You can see here that our offset is way off. I mean we gotta we gotta basically make an entirely new plate for this top piece. Um, and then same for the bottom. You know we got these collars for the bottom here. They need to be split to actually fit on there but um, so we got these guys down here. And then this triple tree, once I cut this part loose that I use, will fit, will slide up into there, and then you'll be able to weld it all together. But the first step is, first step actually is, well, we cut these on the lathe. These are our collars. So they go over the tubes, like that. There's the top one, 
And then this part here where it's going to grab is actually slightly bigger. So we got a slightly bigger piece of tubing there. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this piece of half inch. Uh, it's got about a 3 8 inner diameter. And we got these 3 8 bolts. And we're going to make clamps. So I got to cut four inch and a half pieces. Same with these. These are actually inch and a half. Is that what I want? Inch and a half? That seems like a lot. Um, so these are inch and a half tall, by the way. Uh, so we got to cut four pieces equal length, somewhere around an inch and a half. I think I'm going to go a little bit smaller than that, maybe like inch and three eighths, and prep them and get them all cleaned up. And then what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to weld that piece of tubing right across there like that. And then once that's welded, we'll come in with a grinder and we'll cut right through. We'll cut right through our spacer or our, you know, our, yeah, whatever you want to call it. We'll cut right through this guy without the bolt in there and through the piece of tubing and that will make us a clamp, basically. We're gonna make our own clamp. And then the other thing I wanted to mention when I'm doing this is this is seam welded tubing. You see on the inside, I already ground off the outside. You can't see where the seam is anymore. But you can see on the inside, you can see on the inside of there that there is a seam. Now that's where I'm gonna weld the um, little spacer here. And that's exactly where I'm gonna cut it so that way, you know, it's the strongest that it can be because this, this tube is literally formed over and then welded or, you know, yeah, it is. So this tube is, is, is normally well, is folded over and then welded together. It's just one type of tubing. So that would be the strongest point or the we, that's the weakest point. So that's the point where we're going to go ahead and cut through it. So we're going to do that with all four of these, but first we're going to go ahead and get these cut. We got four clamps. They're all cleaned up and uh, ready to go, pretty much. I deburred, you know, I spent some time on the wire wheel, and you got to put a file through here to clean all this stuff out. And if you can't tell, it's kind of cold in here, but uh, I don't have that much time before I have to go pick up my son from school, so there's no sense in starting the fire and warming this place up. But um, these things are ready to go, so the next step is going to be. So now we have to make the triple tree plates. So I gotta redesign this thing and mark it out on some metal and cut it out. So here we go with that.
All right, here we are, uh, and this is what we have come up with. We got our bottom triple tree with our stem welded in there, and then we've got our upper triple tree. And uh, yeah, goes together like that with the forks. Uh, I just wanted to show a comparison of what we started with. This was the factory one. We ended up cutting out the uh, stem here and the two little steering stoppers that go in there. We kind of just like ground out the back and then knocked them through. So we still have all these parts. We made it with brand new stuff and I think we saved some weight. Yeah, definitely saved a little bit of weight there, I think. Uh, but yeah, here's what we got. So now we need to get the fork or a fork and wheel and everything put together. So that's what I'll grab next and get this all assembled. Assemble. And then here's our fixture. Oh, yeah. And I'm going to show you guys my fixture that I got made here. So probably end up doing another one of these in the future. Sure. Dude. wheel. Oh. <laughs> uh, shoot. Spacers. I had to make spacers. Forgot about that. So I guess that's going to be a stopping point. Uh, forgot that I had to make spacers because the axle bolt is much smaller than this hole. So we got to go to the store probably and get some material to make a couple of spacers. bolted together, triple trees on, it's uh, ready to go. But we had to get a longer axle for it. And I knew that was going to be the case because I've done a couple more of these, or a couple of these. And you can't buy a bolt that long, so you end up having to buy all thread. I want to say it's like an M12 or something like that, uh, all thread, and uh, just to make that axle. And then of course, the brake isn't going to bolt up to the caliper mount here and just work perfectly because, you know, different forks, different brake rotor, and the brake rotor is so small on this. That makes it kind of difficult for it to work. So, that's next is we got to bust out these. This is how the Megamoto comes, kind of convenient. Everything is like on the handlebars, including the brakes. The brakes are wound up here and we got to undo them and Figure out which one's the front, and figure out how we're going to mount to the caliper. Okay, so here's our caliper. It fits on here like so, and it does not bolt on. Nothing is bolt on here, guys, including this. All right, well, I got to figure this out. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to accomplish this, but we got to get this guy mounted in here. Some way. Somehow. Some way. It's happening. I'll check back in with you guys when I figure that out. Alright, here's what I got. So we're going to have to put this little plate right here. And then we're going to drill and tap that. Because this is, I believe, quarter inch, so that should be enough to hold this and then this will come in over that and we'll end up welding the once we shape once we shape this bracket after we drill and tap it shape it get this on there 
and then we'll end up welding this steel spacer to this steel bracket and then this will get bolted in. see the brake caliper flex in there brake on yeah so that works um, and that's a huge step in the right direction now we can hang this now this is ready to be hung on the bike whenever we're ready to do that uh, turns out we're gonna need a new we're gonna need new front and rear cables probably because they're not long enough but this thing is ready to go so pretty excited about that um, the only thing we got left or one of the big things that we got left is the swing arm but we're still waiting on uh, some things to make that happen so uh, you know what let's hang this thing on the bike let's do that well we're gonna do it tomorrow I'm, I'm tired so uh, in the morning, we'll come out and we will hang this thing on the bike, get a look at it, um, and uh, we'll end the episode that way. So, we'll see you guys in the morning. Good morning, everybody. We are going to go ahead and get our new forks installed on our mini bike here on the Megamoto 212 Pro. Here's our fork setup. Uh, I got to loosen the clamps and get this top, top triple tree off of here first. adjustment this whole fork um, can slide up the tubes can slide up in the clamps about an inch before they run out of clamping room uh, I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna show you the bars that we got go ahead and get these suckers on there so these are the bars that we run on most of our mini bikes these are the ones I like anyways and they are the XR50 CRF50 handlebars. When I order them online, they say Pro Taper Mini Bends, usually. Mini Bends. But, yeah. XR50 CR50. I guess we're going to make them see if they fit. Alright. we got to get our clamps on here. Ooh, we got a Pro Taper SE. 7 8 mini bins. All right, here are our stock. These are what come with the Mega Moto, the handlebar clamps. So we're going to go ahead and get these put back on here. Oh, and my holes are not quite big enough, apparently. So let's grab a drill. And go one size up and 3 8 Clean it up. Bolt 
Okay. Here we go. Handlebars on. Woo! That's looking pretty sweet. Of course, we have to take this whole thing apart again, so we're not going to go ahead and we're not going to assemble everything. But here is the front fender. That's going to bolt right up there. See if the bolt holes line up. Yep. So there's our front fender. That'll bolt in there. And then we got a headlight assembly. And I believe also bolts into the same holes. That must be a through bolt situation. And there's our factory headlight. Let's see if that'll bolt up. Oh, snap. It will. Nice. Okay, so there's our factory headlight. All right, here's my other option for a headlight. Uh, dirt Power Racing. This is some cheapo Amazon headlight. Here. Uh, it's very similar to the one that I ordered for my that I have on my other bike, on my own personal orange bike. But that's basically. That's the other option that we have. Actually, it would be more down here. So that would probably interfere with the fender. If we could get it up here, then it would be probably doable. And it looks pretty good right there, too. Problem is, the straps aren't there. So we can bolt this down here. We'll do two more bolts. And then that's the other option. So let's look at that. All right, so that would be something like that. You know, Street Fighter headlight versus, those are our options there. Um, and then you got the fender too, so I guess let's, uh, let's hang the fender. Let's hang the fender real quick, and then we'll show you guys what this is all, this, what this is gonna be. Alright, that's with the fender loosely bolted on there. That's roughly what it'll look like with that headlight on there. It's a good look. It's definitely a good look. And then... Let's see how this will fit on here. If we... Yeah, let me know what you guys think. Do you like the Street Fighter kind of headlight? Or do you like the more traditional round light. I'm, I'm kind of leaning this way. Ultimately, it'll be up to the guy who owns the bike, but let me go, let me know what you guys think. Um, if we do end up mounting that cheap headlight, it's not the end of the world. You know, it's not like you can't switch it back super easily and just bolt on that round headlight, so. Nothing's permanent here. But normally, so those little, those uh, Street Fighter style headlights, I don't know why I, I call it Street Fighter, but. Um, they come with these little rubber straps they hook on and then they hook around your forks. All right, so that's gonna wrap it up for today uh, as far as the Mega Moto goes. Uh, we made some good progress. We got our fork triple trees built. We got our brake bracket made up. So now we have a brake. We need to get a uh, longer brake hose uh, for this. So I'm gonna measure that and get that ordered. And then, um, what else did we do? Uh, we tested out some headlights. So, yeah, let me know what you guys think about those headlight options. I think I might end up having to trim that fender a little bit or do something else. I guess it's not bolted up. But it looks like it is going to rub just a tiny bit in the back there, so I might have to trim that a little bit. But Or just tweak this bracket a little bit or something. So yeah, let me know what you guys think about those headlights. Drop a comment in the section below. And uh, smash that like button for me. Hit that subscribe button as well. And ring the bell if you want to get notified of content coming out. I release videos every Wednesday and Saturday. Thank you guys for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.